Um, today's info session is primarily focused on distributed learning. We're going to briefly review um, our program offerings, um, but we're going to focus on kind of what it looks like to be a distributed learning student at PLC. We do have some other info sessions. We do one about once a month on kind of different topics. So if there are other things you'd like to know at a later info session, you can always sign up for one of those. We can talk to folks one-on-one -on -one if you have further questions, but really today we're focused on what it means to be a distributed learning student at PLTS. So here's a few things that we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about um, our programs briefly. Um, what is distributed learning? how our program is designed, how it works with contextual education requirements in seminary, um, what are the in-person requirements that are a part of our distributed learning program, how distributed learning students build community. Um, and then at the end, we're gonna hear uh, from one of our current distributed learning students. So there's time to ask questions and for her to share a little bit about what her experience has been. So she will join us at about one o'clock um, and we hope to wrap up around 1.15, which is Pacific time. Uh, I'll let you do the translation in your head. <laughs> um, but that is what we're gonna cover. So I wanna start by sharing a little bit of an overview of the programs. I'm gonna invite Emma to go ahead and share some of that. Yes, um, make sure I was unmuted. So all of PLTS's programs are available online um, or in person. Um, we have two different degree options. Um, we have a Master of Divinity and a Master of Arts and Spirituality and Social Change. For the Master of Divinity, this is primarily for folks who um, are wanting to be pastors and being um, ordained in Word and Sacrament, um, ministers of Word and Sacrament. And it also is for folks who have, who don't want to be ordained as well, um, but primarily those are the individuals that pursue the MDiv. We have a few different pathway options for the Masters um, of Divinity. We have a three-year, a four-year, and a five-year pathway, all um, including the one-year internship. Um, and so uh, it just depends on how intensive you're going to want your program to be. Um, for the Master of Arts in Spirituality and Social Change, it's a two-year program with a one-month internship, and it's primarily um, it serves folks who are wanting to be ordained as deacons um, and really want to learn more about the intersection of faith and social justice. Um, but it is also open to folks who are not a part of the LCA um, as well, or who are not seeking ordination. Um, we offer a few different certificate programs. Um, so I think Megan mentioned um, the CATS program already, but the Certificate of Advanced Theological Studies, um, also called CATS, also called our Lutheran Year, um, is a program for students who have already um, completed an MDiv or in the process of um, getting a master's degree, but still need the specific Lutheran studies. Um, so it's a 24 credit certificate program, and uh, it also includes an internship. So this is a great option um, if you've already completed that degree or in the process of doing that as well. Um, and we also have another certificate that Jill is going to touch on um, a little bit later in climate justice um, and faith. So we have two different concentrations through PLTS. Um, you do not have to choose a concentration um, during your time here, but if you want to make your studies a little bit more specific, you can choose either of these options. So climate justice and faith is concentrated for those who want to learn more about faith-rooted leadership, climate justice, and creating change in that realm. There's a few different requirements for folks who pursue this concentration. Um, and um, yeah, it is a great option. And then our other concentration is evangelism and justice. And this is specifically focused um, for folks who are interested in mission development and also wanting to know more about the intersection of evangelism and justice. These, both of these options do not add any time onto your degree. They're um, incorporated within the program. You just have to be very specific about the courses and electives that you take. Um, we also are, something unique about PLTS is we're 
a part of the Graduate Theological Union, which is a consortium of theological schools. And so you are also able to choose from three different certificates um, through the GTU. And they have a certificate in women's studies and religion, certificate in black church and Africana religious studies, as well as a certificate in Asian and Oceanic cultures and faith traditions. So I just wanna mention as well, we talked about the concentration in climate justice and faith, and that can be a part of um, a master of divinity or a master of arts and spirituality and social change degree. But there also are some certificates in climate justice and faith that are offered through our Center for Climate Justice and Faith. Um, and those are structured a little bit differently than like the CAT certificate, for example. They're uh, more intended for folks who are serving in ministry, our lay leaders, or folks who are interested uh, in their, uh, to apply kind of climate justice in their current work. Uh, so it's more of a Zoom cohort-based program with a project. Uh, so it shares a little bit of information about that here. Um, so it's kind of a separate type of certificate, but just wanted to share that information in case that interested anybody uh, on the call. Okay, so what is distributed learning? So at PLTS, um, we call our online program distributed learning um, because we recognize that uh, it's not just distance in terms of uh, kind of where you are. Um, we feel like it's more distributed because we are still one community um, as, as uh, people are in classes together. Um, so distributed learning means that you can pursue your coursework wherever you are in the US. Um, you will be attending classes asynchronously online. There are some hybrid course options that are being offered currently, but it kind of depends on the class. So some students choose to do most of their classes asynchronously and maybe take one class hybrid um, because they want to kind of have that option. Uh, it's kind of up to the student and what's being offered. We'll talk a little bit more about what asynchronously looks like um, and kind of what hybrid might look like. Um, we'll give some examples in just a minute. Um, additionally, our distributed learning program requires that students come to the Berkeley campus um, typically three to four times throughout the course of the program. And those are for week long chunks. Um, so the first requirement is uh, during the first week of your first semester. Um, and then there's some other requirements specifically during our January term. Um, we'll get a little bit more into the specifics of that in a minute as well. Um, and then with every seminary program, um, particularly the Master of Divinity and the Master of Arts in Spirituality and Social Change, there are uh, ministry and context um, and, and uh, contextual education requirements um, because seminary is not just about the academics and the coursework that you do, but it's also about ministry preparation, about spiritual formation. Uh, so those requirements will also then need to take place where you live as well if you're a distributed learning student. So, I want to talk a little bit about our program design because this is something that's uh, pretty unique to PLTS is um, we designed our distributed learning curriculum according to what's called Quality Matters. Quality Matters is um, a nationally recognized um, kind of peer review process that created standards for um, for online programs, specifically asynchronous programs, um, to be student-centered, to make sure that there are activities that are appropriate for online learning and that there are ways of people, uh, for students to engage and interact uh, in their coursework. So our uh, courses are designed according to the Quality Matters standards. Um, and all of our faculty uh, worked with an instructional design person to create an online course. So we have our in-person courses, we have our online courses, and sometimes they look a little bit different because um, the online courses are specific to learning online. There might be a couple of different activities. The learning objectives are all the same. Often the kind of papers and larger assignments are the same, but it's helpful to know that uh, there are some things that are specific to learning online. So what might the coursework look like as an online student? 
um, each week you are going to have deadlines. You're going to have assignments. Um, just like being an in-person student, you'll have weekly readings. Um, but rather than coming into class and um, being part of a lecture, having conversation, you'll be watching uh, some short videos that have been recorded by your instructor. You might be looking at things like uh, some handouts or um, other materials, and then you're engaging in conversation in online forums. Um, so you'll have kind of weekly assignments. You can do those at your own pace throughout the week, uh, but you need to meet those weekly deadlines. And then often there are deadlines to respond to your classmates' posts and things like that. Um, so there's an example over here to the right on the screen. It's pretty hard to read, um, but this is from one of our classes. That's a kind of church history class. We call it um, Reading Christian Theology in Context. Um, and so this is an example of what you would see for one week where you'd be shown, here's all the readings you're asked to do. Um, and then you'd be also given some videos and handouts. So this is from Dr. Sierna, where she would post, she records some short videos that post on here. She would post uh, maybe some handouts that kind of give some summaries of the material that she wants you to look over. Um, so it lists out your assignments for the week. And then there are weekly discussion forums. So this is again, the same class um, where you might have some questions like this. So there are reflection questions. Um, you're asked to kind of respond to those, maybe write a paragraph or two, and then you have to respond to your classmates' posts as well. So that's kind of how you get to engage the material like you would in the classroom, but more asynchronously online. I did mention hybrid. Hybrid means that you would be, uh, there would be some people meeting in the classroom. Uh, you would be joining via Zoom. And so you'd be on the screen and participating in the discussion. Each of our classrooms have uh, equipment to be able to kind of bring both elements into that space. All right, Emma, do you wanna share a little bit about the timing? Um, um, so uh, this, specific slide kind of breaks down how much time you can expect um, different assignments and reading and coursework is going to take. Um, typically, our classes are three credit hours or um, one and a half credit hours, and students on average usually take about 12 credits per semester. Um, and so because it's asynchronously, there is uh, your timing will um, this may not be exact, so your timing may impact um, how long it takes to do in classwork and reading um, in different assignments, but usually you can expect three hours of in classwork and six hours of reading in assignments. Um, so if you're taking 12 credit hours, that's about 36 hours um, of coursework per week. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as um, you're thinking about this. Yeah, part of the reason we do have some people that choose to do part time, a lot of people that look into doing distributed learning uh, choose that because they're working because they have other responsibilities. And so um, we just want to make sure that people are prepared to kind of organize their time in a way that can allow enough time to do the coursework because um, it truly is if you're taking courses full time, it truly is uh, full time, depending on how fast you read, how long you take to do the assignments, and maybe less than the 36 hours, but that's kind of generally what is uh, estimated that you would be spending on the coursework. Um, and Jill mentioned this a little bit before, but contextual education is something that I think is really unique and important about um, our programs as a whole, but also for distributed learning um, students because it allows you to engage with the folks around you where you live. And um, so for each degree, there's different requirements. Um, for the Master of Divinity, there is the Ministry in Context, which is about six hours of working in a, at a specific site um, over three semesters, along with CPE and your internship. Um, and the specific sites you work at and where your internship is located, um, is decided in conversation with our director of contextual education, Pastor Katie Grinberg. Um, and this conversation happens early on where you kind of talk about what you are um, wanting to do and kind of y'all talk through all of the different things that will be most beneficial to you and your time. Um, but this is a great opportunity to 
kind of put into practice what you're learning as well as learn from um, those around you at um, the places you are located. Um, so the MDiv, and then there's the, for the Master of Arts ministry in context, it's six hours per week over two semesters. So two semesters rather than three. Um, and there's also the requirement of a six month internship. Um, it is important to know that the internship is only required for those seeking ordination. So if you're not seeking ordination, um, there's the ability to kind of waive that internship as well. All right, so I alluded to this earlier. Um, this was, Emma, do you wanna share about this? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so another thing that I love about our program is we do have a few um, different requirements for in-person um, connection. And so this, allows for both distributed learning students and residential students to come together and um, get to know one another and build community. And so this happens at our Life and Learning Together Week, which is our orientation um, and first week of classes. So students start their time at PLTS together and then are able to um, build on that community throughout their time at PLTS. Um, we also have several different community events that happen throughout the year, happen throughout that week. Um, this year we had a bonfire where um, we all like sang silly camp songs and it was just like very fun um, and a great opportunity to like get to know those you're going to be learning with and reading discussion posts about and, and all of those things, as well as we also um, during this week we have our first Wednesday Wednesday worship. Um, and so we're all together for that, as well as um, a lot of folks who are second and third year distributed learning students and zoom in. Um, so it's a great way for us all to be together in the beginning of the year. We also require that folks um, attend January term courses in person. Um, so this is one week each January term and um, depending on what degree program you pursue, it'll impact how many times you'll have to be there um, for that. So, yeah. Just want to mention too, with the in-person requirements, uh, people often ask, um, you know, is lodging provided? How does that all work? Mm -hmm. um, PLTS does not provide lodging for those weeks um, and scholarships typically don't cover the airfare as well. So that's something to just keep mm -hmm. in mind as you're um, planning for what those costs might look like. We do uh, have some relationships with some local hotels and can make recommendations and provide, you know, a discount rate and that kind of thing. But that's something that is on the students to plan for and to, uh, to coordinate. So uh, one of the important things at PLTS for our distributed learning program is that um, we are all one student community and kind of a seminary community as a whole. So there are a couple ways that uh, we really try to focus on um, creating community space um, and, and allowing our distributed learning students to also experience that uh, seminary community, even though they're kind of in their own place. Um, so one of those ways is our student association. So uh, student association has representatives from both our distributed learning community and our residential community um, that work together to plan events and kind of uh, bring people together. We've done some kind of like hybrid game nights or um, things that kind of bring people together online. Um, another big part of our community life is our worship. Our, we worship every week on Wednesdays, um, and our worship is very intentionally hybrid. And so uh, we have some people in person. We have a screen where you can see all the people who are Zooming in. Uh, we have some worship leaders that are in person, some that are online. Um, so we've worked hard to kind of build that technology to, to create space for everybody to be together for worship. And then we also have, um, at least this year, we're doing kind of a um, Zoom only um, Friday prayer. So there are different opportunities to connect on Zoom, depending on what your schedule allows and kind of what works best for you. We also have often um, some speaker events, um, especially related to our um, concentration. So sometimes we might have a climate justice speaker, somebody who is serving in ministry in kind of unique ways that might be speaking a little bit about their experience. And all of our speaker events are hybrid as well. 
And then finally, um, our curriculum, as I mentioned before, you know, seminary is not just the academic piece. It's not just the uh, coursework. Um, you're also required to do that contextual education and um, spiritual formation as well. So part of our curriculum requires that you participate in spiritual care and spiritual practice groups. Your first year is a spiritual care group. Um, subsequent years, you work with faculty on different spiritual practices, but all of those um, have either Zoom or in-person uh, components. And so the Zoom students will all meet together in their groups and the in-person students will meet together in their groups as well. Um, so that is most of what we wanted to talk about. I see Elizabeth joining. She is uh, a current third year. Great. Well, Elizabeth, thank you for joining. Um, we wanted to just have an opportunity to hear a little bit from uh, your experience as a distributed learning student. Um, so I guess maybe to get us started, I'm wondering if you can share with everybody just kind of what does your typical week look like? What is kind of the rhythm of your classes and that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. Um, well, it kind of depends on the instructor, but um, it's an asynchronous class, which means you kind of do it on your own timing. You would have posted up on Moodle, which is the, um, the website we use for our classes. You would have lectures that you would watch um, and assigned readings um, or assignments to work on. And then you have like um, dates where those would be due or um, you also have like forum posts. So opportunities to engage in conversation with your classmates and with the teacher about what you're reading and learning that week. So those all would have like post by this day. Um, respond by this day and you kind of work out how that looks like in your week. Um, there are also opportunities to have um, synchronous classes where you um, engage in the or hybrid classes where you engage in the lectures and the lesson real time. So that's a scheduled class. And then you have assignments outside of that class and due dates. Um, so it works out kind of well with like balancing your own schedule. There's a lot of flexibility in there. Uh, how many courses are you taking synchronously currently? Have you taken any? Um, I have two hybrid classes right now and yeah. two asynchronous. Awesome. And how much time do you typically spend each week doing all your coursework? Gosh, I don't know. It really depends on the class. Um, it's it just varies. I think lectures really vary from anywhere from like 30 minutes to um, a couple hours, just depending on the week and like what content is there. And then reading can be, um, it's probably the bulk of my time. The readings is most of my time. Um, so I don't know, like, I don't, I've never done, <laughs> never done the math. <laughs> gotcha. Cool. Thank you. Um, the other question I was hoping you could share a little bit about is just how have you been able to get involved in the PLTS community? Are there ways to kind of build community with your classmates, with uh, get to know your professors, that kind of thing? Yeah, um, I think that learn life and learning week at the beginning was a great opportunity to connect with people and forge some relationships. And then um, so, several of us made um, different text chains. Um, there's different ways to connect on Slack. Um, and just not being afraid to talk to anybody, professors or otherwise, and ask for those opportunities. I know I did a lot of emailing and asking for, um, Zoom opportunities where we could get together and maybe ask the professor more questions or, um, have small group Zooms or things like that, where you can, um, engage a little bit more, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. Attending the the midweek worship is nice because you get to see everyone's face and interact on that level too. Cool. Um, are there any questions from any of the folks here uh, for Elizabeth?
I have another question, Elizabeth. Are there any, um, just broadly, as folks are thinking about seminary, um, distributed learning in particular, but just seminary in general, um, are there any tips or recommendations that you have for them to be thinking about? Um, so people who are considering seminary, I think it's look into like the school and see like that it has kind of um, focuses that you're interested in. And um, I think what's great about PLTS is it's part of the GTU. So there's just like an endless amount of resources that we have access to um, and other schools. So I feel really like good about being able to take, you know, classes about other religions from places of that religion um, and just kind of access to so much, um, so many resources like through the library and whatnot. Yeah. Have you taken other GTU classes as part of your, um, part of your degree? Yeah, I'm uh, currently taking a intro to Buddhism class right now. Nice. Oh, yeah. Well, if that is all the questions, I'm going to go ahead and let Elizabeth get on with her day. And um, just want to thank you for being here and sharing a little bit about your experience and blessings on your classwork. And hopefully we'll see you online soon.